Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful week. Um, this week I want to talk to you about waste, which is um, something that I cover in the Transformation Secrets report that's on my website, but I don't think I've talked about it in videos yet. And the reason it's really important, um, not because I have to sell you on removing waste from your organization, but one of the things I see often when I go into work with companies is that we're really, really good at accumulating process and we're not so good at removing that process after it's no longer needed or um, things have moved on. Compliance is a classic example. Um, you know, we put in place a process to comply with a new piece of regulation or legislation and um, if that is allowed to accumulate over a period of 10, 20, 30 years, you can find yourself in the situation where you're doing a whole bunch of stuff that might not even be relevant anymore. And so when we take this mindset of cultivating an understanding of A, value to customers, and then B, waste, so those things that are not useful to customers, I take a very broad definition, um, and we cultivate that understanding and then we cultivate that opportunity and that environment for people to go and remove waste and we make it safe to do so. That's what starts to really drive that productivity engine and that continuous learning engine. So um, these ideas come from uh, lean manufacturing type routes, right? So um, the Toyota company with the lean manufacturing side of things, um, you've got Seddon who really took those principles and with his company Vanguard, which is still around, um, they apply that to service-based in industries <laughs> and, um, and so the, those concepts around lean and around understanding value and then removing waste that doesn't meet that value for customers, they've been around for a long, long time. Um, and one of the stories that I was told when I was first learning some of these techniques by one of my mentors was uh, the story of Taiichi Ono, who's considered the father of Toyota's lean manufacturing principles and processes. Um, he spent a lifetime in the company. So he started very young, graduated all the way through. And the story goes something like this. At the end of his life, he was asked, how much waste do you still see in the Toyota company? So after a lifetime of being involved, we're talking 30 to 50 years worth of involvement with this company and applying these principles, right? This person is asked, how much waste do you still see? And, um, and I was asked this question. So the answer that I gave was 30%. <laughs> um, it turns out it wasn't 30%. That was not the answer that Taiichi Ono gave. The answer that he gave was more like 80 to 90%. And that was interesting to me on a number of levels. So um, first off, you know, you could take that path that after years of applying these principles, there's still a whole bunch of waste. Like, why even try? But that's not actually the key. The key here is that as we begin to cultivate an understanding of waste and as we cultivate that learning environment, it becomes okay for that number to fluctuate up and down as long as we're learning. And so this is where someone who has spent a lifetime investing in these techniques and still sees 80 to 90% waste and failure in the organization is able to still be positive and optimistic about it as an opportunity for improvement because we've cultivated that continuous learning environment. And so um, I guess that's the takeaway that I want you to take today is that when you're going through and, and working out how to understand and incorporate these techniques into your world, um, it's also about understanding that as we learn more, that measure may actually go in the wrong direction. And that's okay because you've learned more. So your homework for this week, if you haven't already, I want you to go out and spend some time listening to your customers. Go out to that frontline desk where customers are walking up and inquiring. Go and sit in a call center where those phone calls are coming in and you can listen to what customers are asking of you. Build your understanding of what's important to them. Build your understanding of what is value to them and what are all of the things that are not adding value. Cultivate that understanding of value and waste. Cultivate that understanding of the things that are holding us back from delivering more value. And we're actually just spending time doing stuff that's kind of spinning our wheels or it's, it's really low importance and it doesn't have a big impact on customers. And then as you go through that process, in parallel, what we want to start to do is cultivate that environment where we can remove that waste. We can start to strip out those things that aren't adding value. We can strip out those processes that we've accumulated over years and years and years. And we can start to get better at removing process rather than simply adding it. 
And so over time, we're not continuing to grow that weight and that inertia of the organization. We're actually starting to build an organization that ebbs and flows as needed. And as equally as we can add in a new process to help us to do, do better, we can actually remove those things that we no longer need. So that's your homework for this week. Go out and listen to phone calls. Get it in your head what's adding value and what's, um, what's taking away from that value for your customers. And then come back and post a comment below and let me know how you go. I'd love to hear what you're learning and, uh, and what you're observing. So wherever you are in the world this week, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, it's beautiful outside here in New Zealand. And I'm actually about to head up the valley in the sunshine and go and collect some native totara trees. And we're going to replant them around the village. So I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, go out there and smash it this week and I will see you again really soon.